Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I'm your host, Mark Aberti, the content marketing expert, bringing you five new episodes every week where I and top level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success sisters. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. One thing every business needs in order to grow, in order to monetize and make a bigger profit is publicity. We need to get out there in bigger ways. We need to expand our brands. But how exactly do we get the publicity? That is what we are going to focus on in this episode. And who better to talk about publicity than today's guest who helps leaders uh, build their businesses with books and publicity. And in 2001, he founded PR Leads, one of the most cost-effective publicity leads services, which has been copied by many other companies since it was created. He provides publicity and marketing uh, coaching and consulting services services for independent professionals and small businesses. And in addition to all of this, he also writes press releases designed to rank high on search engines. So who exactly is today's guest? Well, today's guest for episode 223 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Dan Janelle. Dan, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, thank you, Mark. It's great to be here. I uh, can't wait to help your guests in any way possible. Dan, I'm really looking forward to this episode and getting a lot more publicity. Something that we uh, is something important to any entrepreneur, and uh, that's why we're going to be tackling it in this episode. But can you just give us uh, some backstory? So, uh, why did you found uh, PR Leads? What got that started? And any of the backstory you could share with us about that? Uh, sure. I was a daily newspaper reporter and business newspaper editor, uh, won a couple of awards, and I went into publicity right at the beginning of the computer era. So I did PR for companies like K-Pro and Commodore when they were synonymous with the word computer. And I also was on the PR team that launched America Online. And uh, that meant that I knew a lot about the online world. And the funny thing is, is that we tried to get PR for AOL, and it just wasn't happening because uh, um, there was a lot of competition and the world didn't care. But suddenly, uh, out of nowhere, I started seeing front page articles about this thing called the Internet. And we're talking about front page articles on the New York Times, the Washington Post, as well as computer trade magazines. And I said, there's something here because there is no Internet company. You know, there's no Internet board of directors. There is no one hiring a, a PR firm for the Internet. And yet suddenly everyone is talking about it. So I said to myself, I'm going to write a book about how to market on the Internet. And you have to remember, this is like 1982. And the only people online back then were like uh, educators and scientists and Al Gore and me. And uh, people said it's not for marketing. And I said, that's crazy because on CompuServe and Prodigy and AOL, everyone is marketing. You could buy books, you could buy shoes, you could buy anything. So uh, I saw I saw that uh, the Internet would be a marketplace as well. And I think uh, the world has has proved that out. So. Long story short, the, the writing that book uh, got me a lot of publicity. It led to speaking engagements literally ar around the world from Beijing to Budapest. It led to a lot of clients. And I started talking about uh, uh, how to, uh, to basically disrupt the PR industry because everything was going online. And there was a service where we could uh, actually match reporters with experts who have uh, – who needed each other. You know, reporters writing stories, they need to quote experts. Experts can't live in their ivory tower. They need to get the word out. They need reporters. We created this uh, service that basically put them all together. It was called PR Leads. 
And uh, it's done very, very well. We still have, you know, a couple of hundred uh, clients as members. And uh, the great thing for entrepreneurs to know is that a subscription business, which it is, there's money coming in every single day. There has been for well more than a decade. And it's a great feeling to wake up in the morning and see money already in your bank account. (laughs) It's nice to have a running start like that. So we've helped a lot of people. And uh, as Zig Ziglar says, uh, you can get anything you want if you uh, help enough people get what they want. And uh, BR Leads certainly fit that bill for my clients and vice versa. So it's, it's a, subscription models are a great model to follow if you're thinking about starting a business or if you're thinking about how you can monetize your business even more. Think about how you can turn it into a subscription-based business. So that's the long story. Short. <laughs> And uh, thank you for sharing with us that story. And subscription is definitely the future. Like you see some brands adopting, you see PR leads, you see like social media tools and things like that having subscriptions. That's going to be something that we are all going to have to embrace in the future. That's one of the changes that is definitely growing. And uh, I'm wondering, how do you get people into the uh, subscription based uh, product like PR leads? Is it different from getting them into a uh, one-off payment type of a product? Like, can you talk to us like how we would get more subscribers for uh, a product or service? Okay. Well, everyone on this call knows all the basic ways of getting subscribers, building a list, doing podcasts, blah, blah, blah. I won't go into that. But I tell you, the one thing that really helped grow uh, my business from, you know, baby steps to hockey stick-like growth was my clients. You know, my clients would uh, get results <laughs> and they tell their friends. So they'd go to their mastermind groups and say, hey, I got into the New York Times. And their friends would say, how did you do that? And I, they would say, well, uh, I got this lead from Dan Janelle. I said, well, who's he and what's that? And they would explain the whole system to them. And I tell you, there's nothing better in marketing than having your clients sell your service for you. So I would wake up in the morning and I would see, you know, orders come in from my website without having spoken to a person. You know, when you're that good or your service is that good, people just order without even talking to you. And we're talking about a $99 a month service. So, you know, it's not cheap. It's not terribly expensive. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, but people saw the real value of it because a PR firm can cost you $2,000, $4,000, $5,000, $10,000 a month. And here we, you can get publicity for just $99 a month. Um, so people saw the value in that and it, it really took off and we had the, the feel to ourselves for many, many years until competitors came in as will happen with any business. <laughs> you have to be prepared for it. You have to have additional services that you can offer. You have to be able to branch out horizontally, vertically. You have to listen to your market and see what other services they want so you can stay relevant because every business in this internet age is A, going to have competition, and B, is going to have someone who's going to offer it for free or lower price. And you can go to all the seminars in the world who say differentiation and offer something better. But bottom line, people want cheap. (laughs) And you you can talk until the cows come home about how wonderful your service is. But if someone is offering the same service, for $10 less, you have a fight on your hands. So that's every business. No one is immune. And I find it really like interesting how a lot of it is word of mouth. As you mentioned, people going into Mastermind saying, hey, I got featured in the New York Times with the help of PR leads. And uh, I'm wondering if you could share with us a little more about what goes into getting something like that, like the feature in New York Times or the feature on your favorite magazine, like how does that uh, relationship building and story positioning work? Okay, great question. Uh, There are a lot of different ways to answer that. I'll start with PR leads because that's the easiest way. You know, we get requests from reporters and we send those requests to our clients. And so you when you get a lead from me, you're going to know two things. Number one, there's definitely a reporter who's interested in writing about this topic right now. And number two, they don't know who to talk to. Because if they did, they would be calling you (laughs) right now or their list of services, list of contacts rather. So, uh, you know, you have a pretty good shot at being quoted. So that that's great. Uh, So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to uh, become a reporter's best friend. So let's say you're uh, a realtor in a local area. Call the local business reporters, call the local realtor reporters, take them out for lunch if that's allowed, take them out for coffee, offer to meet them. Um, that, that's a great way to get publicity. But every reporter, 
uh, excuse me, every, every every publication has an editorial calendar to some degree. Um, so we know that January, everyone's doing stories about New Year's resolutions. In February, everyone's doing stories about Valentine's Day and love. So if you can tie your story or your idea to Valentine's Day and make it unique, chance, there's a good chance you're going to get quoted because reporters are tired about tired of doing the same old story about, you know, buy flowers and candies and take your wife or your girlfriend out for dinner. You know, if you can say, you know, what about love in the office? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? You know, what are the trends in office romances these days? Now you have a story. So think about how you can tie into those stories that reporters are going to write every single month. And then you have, uh, you'll become their best friend. Uh, I can do this with one other one, one other quick example. We can move on. You know, every month the government comes out with with statistics, their housing statistics, their uh, unemployment statistics. So let's say you're a, a business, or you're a career coach, and you help people get jobs, or you're a headhunter, or you negotiate salaries, or anything in the career field. You know that one day a month, that local reporter in your town is going to be dying for some new angle to talk about these job statistics. And if you call them a couple of weeks in advance and let them know how helpful you can be, they will remember that because reporters are always looking for someone new to interview who has something interesting or different to say. So remember, if you want to get publicity, you have to look at it from the reporter's point of view. And that is that they don't care anything about you. They care about writing a story that their readers want to read. And in today's world, the online world, they want stories that uh, people are going to click and share. So you really have to get into the mind of the reporter to think about what's in it for them. And if you do, they're going to want to talk to you today, tomorrow, and every, every month in the future. I really like the idea of building the relationships with reporters and thinking of creative ways to do that. And that editorial calendar is just like, like every new year you get the New Year's articles. And seeing trends like that can really help you position yourself in a better way if you take down a more creative angle as Dan shared with us. Uh, but one of the things that some people want to do is some people want to become the reporter. Some people want to, uh, like one big thing for me is being a columnist for Inc. Magazine. Other people may see uh, themselves writing for Fast Company or see themselves like going for a spot in the New York Times or something like that. So um, do you have any advice on going from uh, finding reporters to get your story on these big platforms to actually becoming the reporter, actually being the person who contributes content consistently to a big platform? Uh, great question. There are a couple of different ways to answer that. And, uh, you know, the overall question or the overall idea right now is that everyone is a reporter and everyone is a publisher because everyone can be a content producer like you. I mean, you, you're a maniac. You have 140 <laughs> plus uh, interviews. You, you write blog posts. You become an influencer. And then people start to notice, especially if you're in a vertical market. So think about where you want to play and where you can stand out and where you can play big. So, in other words, if you want to write about political commentary, I'm sorry, you know, all those spots are taken. You're really going to have to something interesting, different, and wonderful to say to knock off someone from Fox or MSNBC or CNN. Uh, so, you really have to think about where, 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 what you want to do in your life and where your market is, because the riches are in the niches. For example, I have a client who makes drones. And sure, there are a lot of drone companies out there. Well, they specialize in drones for farmers. And some of you from the cities may be saying, farmers, drones, what do farmers need drones for? Well, duh, wouldn't it be great if you could have this aerial device flying over your cornfields and seeing where you have a boll weevil infestation or an area that needs more water or an area that um, is having problems or is doing great. Hey, it's time to pick the crops. You know, you can send a drone out and find out in five minutes instead of sending someone in a, a four wheel drive and have them drive, you know, a couple miles uh, through your farmland to do a, a survey. So uh, they become the experts in the agricultural drone market and they will own it. So think very, very narrowly like that. And you, you, you very well could have a good chance of having a regular column in a vertical market publication. And when I say publication, it could be an online publication too, because just about every print publication is online. Um, so that's cool. Uh, if you're one of, if you're like in the self-help marketplace, you know, you know how to 
your motivational speaker or whatever. There's so much competition. If you want to be like the self-help guru for Inc. Magazine, I, I, I believe in setting realistic expectations. I, it would be very, very hard. It would just be very hard. But if you want to be the self-help guru in a certain vertical market, um, then there might be a better chance. So niche it and you probably would have a chance. Here's another way to answer the story. You've seen these uh, uh, columns uh, opposite the editorial page in newspapers. Those are called op-ed pieces or opposite editorial. Uh, if you type, um, if you go to Google and type, you know, how do I write an op-ed or how do I get into an op-ed, uh, you'll find an organization that will show you how every major publication has their requirements for writing an op-ed piece. This is a nonprofit group. The information, I believe the last I looked was free and it's online. Their mission is to make sure that voices are heard. So that's another way to get there as well. And finally, if there is a publication that you really truly want to work for uh, or have them, uh, have them run your, your pieces, go to their editorial guidelines and see what their policies are. Now you have to remember that a company like say Forbes uh, hires a lot of writers and they don't need any more writers because they've already paid those writers. So when it comes to the print edition, they, they have a lot of writers who are getting paid and they're all fighting for space in the publication. So it'd be very hard to break in there. But Forbes, for example, does hire a lot of people like you who are experts in their field, who have something to say and can write on a consistent basis. And those people do have columns but I have to tell you, they are very strict. They want to make sure that you have an audience. They want to make sure that you have a platform. They want to make sure that you're going to promote your article so it gets read. I have had clients who write for them. I've had other clients who've been fired. And this is a free service. They've been fired from a free service because they didn't have enough clicks and shares and views. So you have to write uh, uh, and be sure it's a, it's a good fit. So those are three ideas to help you get started. Dan, thanks for sharing those great insights. There's a lot of good stuff in there. And um, it, it is very hard. And uh, just to be able to angle yourself in a slightly different way can make all the difference. And I mean, you've, you've had a lot of experience with seeing people trying to get featured in these publications, being contributors to these publications and anywhere in between. But uh, I'm wondering, based on your experience, what do you believe holds most people back from getting the publicity that uh, in part they uh, want slash need, but also in part that they deserve because I feel like there are also a lot of really awesome people who uh, just aren't getting the spotlight that as much spotlight as they could be getting. Okay. There are probably two ways, to, at least two ways to answer that question too. Uh, one is internal. Uh, they don't have the confidence. And the other is uh, skills. They don't know what to do or say or how to go about it. So let's dive uh, into those issues. Uh, if you don't have the confidence to do it, that's that's totally acceptable. And you know, there's a bit of the imposter syndrome in just about everyone. And uh, I'm reading a book about that now, and uh, it's it's on Kindle. Uh, it's called the Imposter Syndrome. Gosh, I would remember. I will send you the exact title for the show notes. It's really, really good. And it basically says that everyone has a bit of the imposter syndrome. We, we all think that someone is smarter, better, faster, better, better looking, whatever, than we are. And that holds us back. Uh, and there are ways to overcome that. So uh, I will send you that information and people can read that. Uh, then there are the skills. Well, and in this conversation, we are talking about some of the skills needed to work effectively with reporters. Number one, get into their frame of mind, see what kinds of stories they are writing, uh, see how they want to help their, their readers. And if you can do that, that's a big deal. Uh, second is how do you contact them? So most people now use their phone as a screening device. In fact, just this morning, I canceled my desktop phone service because it is nothing but a cesspool for robocalls. Uh, I never pick up the phone because now they're spoofing caller IDs. So <laughs> it, it, it's just a wasteland. So I think everyone uh, in the media is, is the same way. They're using their phone as a screening device. So you can leave your phone message on their answering machine, or you can text them with a short pitch. And I'll describe the tools for doing that right now. Reporters do listen to their voicemail. So you can tell your story in 30 seconds or less. And you're probably saying, no, I can't. My story is so wonderful. I need five minutes. 
Well, reporters will not give you five minutes. You have to trim your story down to 30 seconds or less. And you can do that. Everyone knows the elevator pitch. Everyone knows variations on their elevator pitch. If you don't, you can go online. It's like, how do I write an elevator pitch? And you'll see lots of articles to help you. I have a very simple method. It goes something like this. Uh, Hi, uh, Ms. Reporter. Your readers are interested in this topic. I have an interesting spin on this, which is X, Y, Z. If you'd like more information, please call me. Here's my number or visit my website. Here's my website. Please let me know if you have any questions. And that's all you really need to say. Uh, again, this is written from the, from the reporter's point of view. You're telling them that their readers are interested in the subject. You're an expert in it or you have a good twist on it. You have a good angle on it. That piques their interest. Now they want to know more. Now they're ready to have a conversation with you. So you can do it in three, three sentences. If you said that on the telephone, it would take maybe 10 or 15 seconds, and reporters would appreciate that. Also, if you looked at it on a text or an email, you know, most people are, are mobile now. Uh, I mean, I still work on a desktop when I'm in my office, but I see so many people who are out reading messages on the train in their cars. I wish they wouldn't do that in their cars, but they're reading it anyway. They're reading it at conferences when they're bored. So most messages, in fact, when I when I do Facebook ads and I see the statistics, most of the ads are read on a mobile device, uh, which really blew my mind. So the world is really mobile now. Now, anything you send to a reporter on a mobile device is going to look long. So three sentences is fine. If you sent them three paragraphs, it would look like war and peace. So. Think short, and you'll you'll get better results. I tell my clients that the less they write, the more results they will have. Dan, thanks for sharing all that great advice. And I really agree about writing shorter emails. I have a rule where most of my emails are five sentences or less. And it's just easier to, uh, like when you limit yourself to five sentences or less, you really get the important stuff out. And uh, it's just the idea of being able to get the summarized version of yourself, that 30 second pitch, as you mentioned before, instead of five minutes, uh, because these reporters, they are getting a lot of queries or get like, you're not the only one by any means contacting that reporter or asking to be a contributor. So uh, brevity is very important, uh, as Dan mentioned. And one of the things that I want to ask you right now is um, like throughout any journey, there are going to be certain challenges along the way. And I'm wondering if you could share with us one big challenge that you came across on your journey to growing PR leads and a powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. Sure. I sort of hinted at it uh, earlier that every business eventually has competition and we had competition too and they charged a a different rate because they they were on the advertising model instead of of the subscription model and they did very, very well. So, hey, you you can't be the only game in town. You need another option. You need more services. In uh, in the MBA circles, they call this the S curve. And imagine this S that starts at the bottom of the line and eventually goes up and, and curves around. Well, that's your growth pattern. You know, you're starting at the bottom and you're inching along and something clicks and you start to make more money and life is good. And then it hits a peak and then say, hey, gee, Dan's making money. Let's see how we can make money from that model. <laughs> And you get competition and you get price competition, you get competition on any number of levels and someone and you need something else. And at that point, that's where you launch your next product or service. And for me, I am helping people write books now. I I can ghost write books for people. I can coach them when they write their books. I can uh, give them advice as they're writing their books. And that's a lot of fun for me. And it still is related to publicity because what is a better uh, sales tool or a piece of publicity than a book? You give a book to someone at a networking meeting or you give the book to a prospect and they think you're an expert that builds your publicity, it builds your brand. So it's great to have something in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal or Inc. or Fast Company. That's, that's certainly five stars and right up there is your very own book with your name because no one throws out a book. They may not read the whole book. Statistics show that people don't read entire books, but 
they'll put the book on their bookshelf and one day they'll say, hey, you know, it's time to sell our house. I think I have a book here from some realtor that I met at a, at a networking coffee a couple of years ago. Where is it? Oh, there it is. And bingo, you, you now get a phone call and you have a client because your book acts as a silent salesperson. So you need to think about your your next big thing. And it may not be as big as your your thing right now, or the market may say, hey, this first thing was just preparing you for your next big thing. You never know. That's why it's a journey, and that's why it's exciting, and that's why it's an adventure. The silent salesman analogy is just absolutely incredible. That's something I'm going to remember uh, for a while, because like when you look at a book, like, I mean, it makes sense. Like a lot of books, they promote some kind of service at the end. Some books promote other books written by the author. I really, like that is such a beautiful analogy for, uh, books and actually perfectly segues into a question I really enjoy asking people, which is for actually book recommendations. So uh, I wonder if you could share with us three books that you believe will have a positive impact on us. The three uh, silent salesmen we should be reading. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. Uh, that, 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 that's a question I was not prepared for. Well, I'm reading books about how to become a better writer. And I'm reading lots of books about how to read, read fiction better and use fiction techniques in nonfiction books so the books are more interesting. And uh, I'm going to mess up on one book. Uh, actually, let me go to my Audible. I have it right now. I'm listening to it as I walk every day. The it's Audible's called amazing. The Art of X-Ray Reading by Roy Peter Clark. And it's a wonderful book that dissects all the classic literature that we should have read but didn't read because we thought it would be too boring. And he makes it so exciting and so interesting. I can't wait to get those books. And I think there are going to be a lot of techniques in there that, hey, if you want to write a book, that's fine. But I think a lot of people on this call are, are certainly blogging. And there are many fiction techniques that you can use to make your articles and your blog posts better. So I would recommend that book uh, for uh, – improving your writing um let's see I, I think anyone who wants to be a better writer will always benefit from reading any book uh and i'm going to send you two books for your show notes because i'm drawing a blank right now um in, in other recommendations and i don't want to give you the same old stuff because i know that you have you know you have tim ferris and you have uh, uh napoleon hill and all those guys and i have books that are just as good or better and i'm just drawing a blank on it now and i will make it up to you in the show notes dan thanks for giving us that book recommendation we look forward to receiving the other two which will be in the show notes marketbury.com slash e223 we will also throw content marketing secrets which is my book in the show notes uh anyone who wants their copy can go to marketbury.com slash book and before we wrap up this episode Dan, I've asked you several questions throughout our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? I think people need to ask themselves, uh, what is their ultimate goal and what is their ultimate purpose? Uh, and it's not just to make money and it's not just to help people and, and all those wonderful things. It's, it's, you know, when you're, when you're starting a business or thinking about your business, you know, what is it that really brings you joy and makes you feel fulfilled? For me, I have a special gift. I was a newspaper editor and reporter. I know when people bury their leads. So when I read people's books, I can see that, oh, here's a story on chapter three that you buried. That's really your origin story. That should really be chapter one. And the title of your book, that really doesn't reflect what you are saying. We, you, in chapter five, you mentioned this term. This term is really what your, your title should be. And my clients see that and say, oh, my gosh. You're right. I, I didn't know that. And that's where a coach comes in or that's where a consultant comes in and helps you see things that you didn't see. And one of my favorite stories is about uh, a guy who's playing basketball and, and he keeps on missing all these three point shots. And a neighbor says, hey, move your arm closer to your body. And he does. And suddenly he's sinking all the three pointers. And it's just a little slight move but it made all the difference in the world. So I think it's important for people to, to work with coaches. Uh, no book, was, uh, no business was created in a vacuum. It does take a village. It does take a team to 
take your business to the next level. And as entrepreneurs, we think we can do it all. I certainly did. But frankly, it's probably the biggest mistake I ever made in my business was that I didn't get the kind of help I needed. Uh, I was too proud or too vain or I thought I knew it all. And in reality, I need a good kick in the butt sometimes to get out of my own way to take my business uh, to the next level. Dan, thank you for sharing with us that great question. A lot of insights in there about building a team, which is really important. And I mean, all of your insights uh, throughout this episode were really great as well and will help us with getting more publicity, getting featured in more places, uh, being a contributor as well. So if you guys want to keep up with Dan, we're going to throw in another link in the show notes. Write your book in a flash dot com. That is the place you can go for more information to work with Dan as a coach or as a speaker. So again, that link is write your book in a flash dot com. Dan, Dan, I can't thank you enough for sharing all of your great insights with us today. It was such a pleasure to have you on Breakthrough Success. Thank you very much. It's uh, great meeting you and talking with you. You ask great questions and I hope I can help you in the future as well as any of your listeners. Thank you so much for the opportunity. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn.